Hi, everyone. This is another lightning webinar. This time the title is The Product Owner and the Ready Ready State. So here we're trying to talk about one thing that's a bit outside the Scrum Guide. That is to say the Ready Ready criteria, the definition of ready. So we're making one, arguably, arguably maybe two suggestions uh, today. So the, the suggestion is not a particularly large one, uh, nor especially hard to do, I don't think. But we do think it can give you some great benefits. Um, so if you start it, that it might make a big difference for how you're doing Scrum. So the first thing is it starts with a person, perhaps not just the product owner, but particularly the product owner. Uh, certainly the Scrum Master and the team have their part to play in, these, in this idea. But the product owner is quite key to the success of Scrum. Uh, we might say, this is the football season, we might say that uh, Tom Brady does not, uh, the, the quarterback for the New England Patriots, does not win the game by himself, but he certainly helps a lot. And so the same thing might be said of the product owner. Uh, there are many key activities for the product owner. We want to focus today on two of them. Uh, one is that he or she answers the questions in the sprint quickly, the questions that the team may have about what the features are. Uh, in addition, she or he answers all the questions before the sprint starts, or at least that's what we're recommending. So we're trying to deal with the problem of the unclear requirements. We hear about this all the time. Uh, the requirements are not clear enough, and therefore we couldn't get as much work done. Uh, so our feeling is this must stop. Uh, we need to know what the requirements are. That doesn't mean to say that we can't be innovative and always learning what the requirements are going to be. But at least those requirements that we're committing to in this sprint, we need to have a better, much better idea than we have had, usually, most teams, uh, than we have had in the past about what the requirements are, the details of them, you might say. Uh, and we find that people are much more productive if they know what they are building. And then again, they're much less productive if they don't. Uh, so the product owner has the responsibility to assure that the requirements are better, that there's much, a much higher level of clarity. Will we ever get perfect clarity? Almost surely not. But can we get much better clarity than we've had in the past? I think that's quite, quite doable. Uh, so we want better details or more details, you might say, for each user story. How clear do the requirements need to become? Uh, this, is, this is a bit of a, a tough question, it's, uh, and, and it's a good question to ask, I think, and also in some ways hard to answer very precisely in a short seminar. Um, to me, only the Scrum team, the whole Scrum team together, can answer this question and how it relates to their specific work. Uh, it, I think it does vary and needs to vary by situation, by, uh, by which scrum team you're talking about, by which person uh, you're working with, and perhaps even by the specific user story you're talking about. But, in, but what we're recommending is give them, give, give the, the implementers in the team what they're asking for and not give them anything more that's just waste uh, that they won't really even read. Um, Okay, you may have to convince them to accept less than they initially asked for. You may even need to uh, convince them to accept more than they asked for. But in general, what they ask for and what they really need. Uh, let's remember that we want some degree of negotiability about the requirements. Some of our implementers, some of our people on the team are quite experienced, quite senior. If we box them in too much, uh, we won't allow them to be as creative as they might be for us or for the, for, the, for the team, you might say, for the customers. Um, so uh, we still want some negotiability, but in general, the problem is, is not negotiability. The bigger problem is that the requirements have been for far, far too long, even in Waterfall, but certainly uh, in Agile, very, very often, they're far too unclear. Um, and uh, to some degree, this is because people are using Agile to become or to enable them to become less professional. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody would say that out loud, but I do think that that's uh, in effect what is happening. Um, so we, went, we want some trade-off between negotiability and clarity, but in general, we were, we're looking for more clarity uh, about the details of the requirements for each story. Um, could we be providing too much information? Mm, I suppose that's possible. Uh, can we possibly em eliminate, as I suggested before, the creative opening or, or the possibilities for innovation that experienced implementers, uh, experienced coders or testers might be able to give us? 
Uh, and uh, yes, we are. Is that Would that be important if that were the case? Yes. And I still think that the bigger problem is that we don't have enough uh, clarity on the requirements. Okay, so what are we recommending? We're recommending the ready, ready criteria, uh, aka also known as the definition of ready or DOR. So the idea is the story must be ready and have enough information in the opinion of all the implementers uh, on the team, all the coders and testers, or whomever the implementers may be, depending on your situation, um, before a story can enter a sprint. So we're having entry criteria for a story to come into the sprint. The implementers need to put together this list of the information, uh, uh, I should say maybe a list, of the information that they need, at least in general terms. And it must be what the product owner can do. Uh, that is to say, they, they can't ask for things that, that the product owner and the people that are helping the product owner, as I somewhat jokingly call them, the minions, um, the, the other people that are helping the product owner. It must be something that the product owner and those people can put together, um, but it also must be what they need. Um, and we're going to pick and choose from a rather long list, at least I'm recommending a long list. We're going to pick and choose from a long list, three or four or five, or maybe even seven or eight items uh, that we're going to do for this specific story. So here's an idea, a quick idea of the kind of list we're talking about. So as a team, we put together this list, uh, something like this. Uh, this is an example. So it might include acceptance criteria, a mock-up, a use case, a process flow, uh, it certainly needs to be, we certainly need to check that the story is small, that the stories are sprint sized, uh, that if the data elements are important, that we know what they are and how many there are, uh, that we maybe understand the data flow, the system flow, and so forth. So we won't belabor this particular list. This is just an example. But the team, uh, both initially and on an ongoing basis, can modify this list of what kinds of information that they need for specific stories. And we might not need, we, uh, let me put it more strongly. We certainly don't need all this information for every story. We're picking and choosing what are the most essential things that we need to know about this story. So the process is, is fairly straightforward. Some number of sprints, I'm suggesting roughly two, might be three, possibly even more, but um, and possibly even less, but very typically two sprints ahead of time. We identify the information we need for story 55, uh, and then during those two sprints, or most of those two sprints, the product owner and the people helping the product owner build out that information for the team and then deliver it to the team roughly two sprints later. The information is reviewed in a some kind of a refinement meeting. Um, I like a, to think of it as two meetings per sprint, but it could be done other ways. But the information that is obtained um, or gathered so far is shown to the team and they get to review that and decide whether or not it's sufficient. That is to say, whether or not they want to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So if they, if one person gives it a thumbs down, then we will exclude that story from the upcoming sprint, the sprint that it's about to start. As I mentioned earlier, the idea is that we live and learn. So we will find from time to time that certain stories won't turn out well. We will ask ourselves why. One of the reasons, not the only one, but one of the reasons is uh, that we didn't, the, we, the team, the, the implementers, did not have sufficient information to do the story correctly. If that's the case, then we ask ourselves, um, what was, what kind of information was that? Was that already mentioned in the Ready Ready criteria in the DOR? If so, then maybe we do a better job of collecting the information, but uh, at least occasionally we would expect that uh, that information was not even listed, and that is the root cause of why we didn't gather the information, why we didn't have it, and therefore why the story was unsuccessful at the end of the spread. Anyway, we hope this idea works for you. We hope it helps you uh, be more effective together as a team and working in collaboration. Uh, so I hope, hope you can make it work for you. Uh, happy scrumming. Uh, talk to you again pretty soon. Here's a little information about us. Uh, and uh, particularly, I loved a lot of the pictures here. I want to give a special mention to Carrie Langell, who helped put together the pictures. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.